Hello, in this video, we're going to learn how to navigate Blender 2.8. And by navigate, what I really mean is how to navigate just the 3D viewport. I'm not going to really cover how to navigate um, the UV image editor or the UV or the timeline or the sculpt mode or anything like that. Just the 3D viewport, just so that you can get up to scratch with most of Blender's main important functions really quickly. Let's first start off with these options over here. So once you're in the 3D viewport, you can change the view of your 3D scene. So for example, you can change the viewport to show from the top view, or the uh, front view, or the side views. Of course, there's a much more easier and quicker way. Uh, if, you, if you just go to view and viewpoint, you'll see these shortcuts over here. These are pretty much the same shortcuts that you can use to change your view. So numpad 1 to go into front view, control numpad 1 to go into back view. A 3 to go into left or to right view, control 3 to go into left view, 7 to go into top view, control 7 to go into bottom view. You can also use 2, 4, 6 and 8 to sort of rotate around the 3D viewport um, and pressing 5 on your numpad keyboard toggles between user perspective and orthographic mode. Okay. Um, if you don't like to remember the shortcut keys, there are these new widgets that you can use in the new Blender 2.8. So for example, you can rotate around your 3D viewport by just click and dragging this new colorful object over here. You can pan your 3D object by uh, left click and then dragging this. Um, you can also zoom in and out by left clicking and dragging this. You can change from uh, 3D viewport to camera view by clicking that. Also you can press numpad 0 on your keyboard to do the same thing. And over here you can press uh, toggle between uh, orthographic and perspective view, same as numpad 5. Now this, this also existed in Blender 2.7. A new thing you can do in Blender 2.8 is use the new pie menu. So if I hit tilde on my keyboard, you'll see these options which can change the view really quickly. So um, if you don't want to memorize shortcut keys, the pie menu can be a pretty helpful function. So press the tilde key on your keyboard. The tilde key is right next to the number one key on your keyboard and above the tab key. It's the one in the corner. So um, if I hit that, I can click to change the views. I can click to left view to change that view. I can click the different, different views that I want. Also, you'll see these numbers next to the view. So that does pretty much the same thing. Uh, if I want to change to, let's say, the right view, I just hit 6 on my keyboard and that changes to the right view. I can do it again and change to go to the front view, I just press 7. To do it even quicker than that, just hit tilde and don't let go of the tilde key. And just move your mouse to where you want it. So if I want to go left, then all I need to do is let go of the tilde key. So it can be a very, very quick way without clicking anything. So hold down tilde and then move your mouse there and let go. So it can be a very, very quick way to change views in uh, Blender 2.8. So let's go to the front view for now. So that's how you manipulate the, the view in uh, Blender. There are also these other options over here as well, which you can play around with. Um, oh, maybe you might also want to know that you can uh, fly around your object. So if I, go, so if I press fly navigation, uh, you can use the W, A, S, D keys to sort of fly around your 3D object. Sort of like a, as if you were playing a, a first person sort of a game. So that is the view. Next, selecting. So if you want to select an object in Blender, just hover your mouse over the object and right click. So if I want to select the camera, I just right click the camera. If I want to select the lamp, I right click the lamp. If I want to select the cube, I right click the cube. If I want to select multiple objects at once, I press shift and then right click the other objects. So now I have all three objects selected. You can also, while you can't select objects one by one, in this view, you can choose to select all or select none. Um, and you can use these shortcut keys over here as well. So A will select all objects and Alt A will deselect all. You can also press A and then double tap A twice to deselect. The old Blender, in the old Blender, if you just press A and then A again, it would deselect. I don't like this new feature where you have to double select A or press Alt A. It's I find it sort of slows down my my workflow a little bit. Anyways, it's maybe something I just need to get used to. Um, yeah, so that's that. But other options are still there, like border select. So if I select that or press B on your keyboard, you can select multiple objects that way, or 
I can press C, which is the same as circle select, and then uh, scroll up to choose the size that I want, and simply paint the objects that I want to select. Then C, and then middle mouse click to deselect. So yeah, we can still use that. Um, another way to select objects in Blender is to, in the outlining window, just click the object that you want to select. Just as we discussed before, if you can't find an object, just search it up and then just select it that way. Pretty quick and easy. So that's how you select objects. Uh, next up, the add. So the add menu allows you to add different objects to your scene. So for example, if I want to add a monkey, I go to add mesh monkey. And that is the blend mascot. To delete an object, just press X and delete. Or alternatively, you can go to the object panel and delete the object that way as well. If you want to know the shortcut key for adding an object, just press Shift A. And you will have the exact same menu to add any objects that you want. So you can add actual meshes, you can add curves, surfaces, text, grease pencil, which is good for drawing, uh, armature for uh, rigging and animation, um, lattice for def deformations, empty, speaker, camera, lights, light probes, force fields, you know, there's, there's all these options there for you. Lastly, there's this modes option over here. So uh, depending on which object you select, you will have different modes. So the lamp only has the object mode, the camera only has the object mode, and the cube has all these modes. So these modes allows you to carry out one specific function based on that mode. So in edit mode, you can edit your 3D object. So I can make maybe move this vertice over here, and that is now my object. So I can just so that's the mode where I make changes to the the form of my 3D mesh. If you do any kind of 3D modeling, you would use the edit mode. Always use the edit mode. Okay. Um, and the edit mode also opens up some other extra tools for you. So you can, inside edit mode, you can also add more objects if you want. You can um, modify your mesh. You can extrude vertices. All this stuff are mostly related to 3D modeling, which we'll cover maybe in a later video. Okay, so let's go back to object mode again. So it just allows you to, to change which mode you want to work in. If you want to paint your object, you go into texture paint. If you want to uh, sculpt your object, you go into sculpt mode, and then you can straight away start uh, sculpting your 3D object. So it just allows you to work in different different modes. Another way to switch between modes in Blender without having to use this screen is to hit Control Tab on your keyboard. This will open up yet another pie menu. And uh, you can pretty much do the same thing. You can switch modes by either clicking on the mode that you want using the, the numpad on your keyboard or holding down control. Uh, let me just right click out of it. Or holding down control tab and then just uh, changing the mode without having to let go of your mouse and clicking anything. So that is another way to use a new Blender 2.8 to switch between modes. Finally, what I want to just briefly cover is how to modify your objects. So as, as we know, we can go into edit mode and actually modify our, our 3D object by selecting vertices and moving them around. Um, we can also in object mode move the object as a whole. If I press G on the keyboard, I can move my objects. G represents grab, by the way. So I can move my object anywhere that I want. If I press R, I can rotate. And if I press S, I can scale. So those were, in the Blender world, those were the three most important shortcut keys, probably the three most used shortcut keys in Blender. So those ones are still here in Blender 2.8 as well. But if you're new to Blender and don't really care, don't really care about these shortcut keys, uh, you can do the same thing by changing these modes over here as well. So this is another kind of mode. So to do that, just click on uh, the mode that you want. So for example, you want to move. now. Anything I do, I can move just by left click and dragging anywhere that I want. If I want to control which axis I want to move my object, just have to left click and then drag. And that will lock the object uh, object's position on that axis only. If I want to move it in the Z axis, uh, which is the Z axis there, I just left click, sorry, left click and drag. And now it's locked to that axis only. Um, if I select this one, it means it will restrict it so that it won't move on the uh, Y axis at all. So if I go like this, it will move it only on the Z and X axis. If I select this one, 
it will move it anywhere but not the x-axis so, like so um if i just uh go out oops if i press if i do on the keyboard as well so i can do the same thing g and x the lock on the x-axis g y g z okay same thing you can do with the rotation as well so you can use a rotation gimbal to to rotate your object around the axis to to lock it on the axis and to move it on the object overall so pretty cool finally you got the scale one as well so you can scale it on the z-axis so that's the overall you can scale oh sorry you can scale on the x-axis you can scale on the y-axis and you can scale on the z-axis or you can just scale overall by just clicking outside and just dragging so that is a new change in blender 2.8 that wasn't there in blender 2.7 you can also have there's also this option transform so you can do everything rotate scale um and uh move all in the one option if i click outside it'll only just move okay so that's that um if i go back to the 3d cursor view uh it now allows me to reposition my 3d cursor these new buttons that we have over here they're all related to 3d modeling so i'm going to skip over this for now uh, you don't need to know about it. That's probably more for advanced 3D modeling kind of stuff. The most notable change in the new Blender 2.8 viewport is these buttons over here. We have these new buttons over here. Uh, this allows you to hide in one group. Uh, for example, I want to hide all the cameras. It just uh, hides it that way. Note that it doesn't make any changes over here. It help to declutter your interface if you have many things going on at once. But in, in one of my previous films, I've worked with a scene that had many different cameras and many different lights and uh, a relatively heavy scene uh, with lots of objects. So in that instances, the cameras and the lights can get in the way. So I guess in a very quick way to hide them is just to, just to hide all the cameras and lights so that they don't declutter your workflow. When you hide that, this, this eye starts to uh, disappear. You can also disable from selection. So for example, if I click the that mouse, if I click that mouse key, I now can't uh, select any um, camera or light, but I can't select the camera. So it's just some way to lock the object as well. We have the new overlays add-on. So here, um, if I click this one, you'll notice that all the all these um, lines and the, the words, all these lines in the display, the words, they're all uh, disappear. Even the cameras and lights go away as well. And you're only left with the 3D object. So why would you use this? Well, this is probably best to use if you're using a real-time rendering engine like Eevee or OpenGL. Um, if you're using those ones, then you can very quickly hide this and then just render just the scene that you have over here. Uh, it can be a very quick way to do that, okay? But if you do want to show the overlay, which you, in most cases you want to while you're working on your 3D project, uh, you can modify some options. So in the overlays, just click that. If I uncheck gizmos, you'll hide all these extra gizmos that we had at the beginning. Uh, if I check it again, it'll come back. You can also choose to hide the grid view if you want to by just checking that, or you can choose to, to modify the scale of the grid, things like that. Uh, you can hide the text info, which will hide this, this bit over here. Um, annotations, if you have any. 3D cursor, which is this one, I'll hide that. And all, you also have all these other options as well that you want to hide or not. For geometry, you can choose to show a wireframe. So if I just deselect this, um, you can choose to show a wireframe of your 3D object. So you obviously won't be using this for a final render, but it would be good if you want to maybe post it up on CG Society or Blender, Blender Artists or something like that and get some feedback uh, from users of the topology of your 3D model. So it could be useful for that, that use. Um, there's also all these other options as well, motion tracking, don't need to know any of that stuff. Face orientation might be useful. It basically shows uh, the direction where your normals are facing. Um, so this can help with shading and things like that. Uh, so blue indicates that the normals are facing outwards like this. Red would indicate that the normals are facing away. The overlays pretty much allow you to modify what you want to see in your 3D viewport for your reference. Um, there's also these modes over here, wireframe. If you want to be able to make like 
You want to be able to see through the object, sort of like an x-ray mode. You have to change it in the shading settings. Tick x-ray and then just put this all the way down to zero. And you can see through the object fully. If I go into solid mode, you'll see the object with the basic material set. Um, and here you can also change the shading. For example, you can choose to use a studio shading, which is just a basic shading that you get by default. Or you can choose to use a matte cap. So matte cap allows you to choose all these different uh, materials uh, that um, that can pretty much be good to use when sculpting. So let me just use the monkey head. Um, and let's just make it smooth. Press W smooth. Um, there we go. Uh, if I just hide the uh, grid lines. There we go. Uh, so you can see the material capture. And this is also adding a smooth subdivision. There we go. We can get uh, these sort of... Uh, different matte caps so what why would you use this uh, this is mostly used by 3d modelers and 3d sculptors so you can see the overall form and shape of your characters more clearly than the default shape so when you whenever you do sculpting whenever you do 3d modeling I highly suggest you use these matte caps uh, you can choose to use the background of your theme or the world or the viewport whatever you like so that's the solid mode you can also change to the material mode, the look dev mode as they call it, and that will put your objects in the materials that you set over here. So for Suzanne, if I create a new material, I can create this sort of a look. And the shading, you can choose to use the scene lights. So for example, I've got a, a basic lamp over here with green lighting. Uh, you can see what it looks like with lighting. It's also good for real-time rendering as well. Um, and you can get a, a basic idea of how that will look like. If you have some, I don't know, some shininess, some, some metallicness to your character uh, and some low roughness so that things are reflective. Uh, so that's a relatively reflective looking character. You can see that in your look dev mode. Finally, you have the rendered mode. The rendered mode is literally what your, what your scene will look like when you actually render it and save it to an image file. So this is the most important one. You need to make sure you get this one to look right. There's no shading option uh, because this is going to be your final render. So you need to make sure everything is already set up properly in the scene so that it looks correct when rendered. All these other stuff are just there for your own display purposes only. It doesn't actually represent the final thing. In the look dev, you can choose to use the, your own world, which is a scene world. That's more accurate to what it will look like when rendered. Uh, but if you, if you want to use an existing HDRI image, you can use that one as well. You can choose from one of these five HDR images. At the time of recording, I, I couldn't find an option for me to add my own HDR images. It might be possible in the future, it might even be already be ready in your version of Blender if you're watching this at a later date, which is probably 100% likely the case. If it's in your version of Blender, you can go ahead and use your own HDR images to see what your character or what your scene will look like in that, that view. Okay, so that's it. That is the basics of navigating in Blender. So at this stage, I highly recommend you go in and play around and dabble with all these, all this stuff and try to get comfortable with it. Next video, we'll, be, we'll have a basic look at the properties window. And then after that, we'll go straight into doing some 3D modeling.